I told you that in the not so distant future, your veins could keep you safe online, a computer chip tattoo would help protect your digital identity, and ingestible sensors meant that you would quite literally be swallowing your password. You know, we already have access to fascinating tools based on behavioral biometrics, which means using elements such as your speech pattern or typing habits to identify you as you. Security threats are skyrocketing by the day, and it's now more about when you'll be hacked rather than if. But you've also got a whole raft of clever tools being developed that go beyond relying on the standard stuff, such as something you know, a password, and something you have, a card reader from your bank, for instance, to something you are. And by this, I mean physiological and behavioral elements specific to you. I've tracked down two security pros whose work day in, day out is aimed at keeping us much safer online. So you're the good guys here. Now with me are Yuri Rivner, the co-founder of Biocatch and its VP of Cyber Strategies, and Jose Palazon, did I get that right? Yeah, yeah. Head of Software at 11 Parts. Guys, thanks for being in my hot seat today. Thank you very much. Yeah. So there's clearly a lot to be excited about with the future of security and biometrics, but let's just get something a little contentious out of the way first quite quickly. A lot of the consumers I've spoken to have expressed quite a lot of anxiety around parting with their data, even if it's for the benefit of access to some really great security tools. So what's your take on that? So I would say that if it's, you know, privacy versus uh, security, it's one thing, but now biometrics is also used to uh, provide better convenience, let's say. So as you walk to Heathrow and you have, you know, this iris scan uh, border control facility, people do that and, and they register for that because the lines are shorter, you know, it's just more convenient to go and do that. Okay. Yeah, I guess the concern comes from this is data that uniquely identifies you and you're not going to be able to change it. You're stuck with your fingertips, you're stuck with your iris and information flows. Companies are going to trade with this information and it's going to be leaked and you cannot change it as if it was a password or, or a credit card. So good luck if something happens to that information. Yeah, and I think overall for a lot of us the benefits do outweigh the risks. So that obviously is, is some solace. Yuri, my next question is very specifically for you. Explain the two main types of biometrics for our viewers, please. Yeah, so we have physiological biometrics, which would be iris scans, fingerprints, etc. These sort of things kind of stay with you. And we have also behavioral biometrics, which means, you know, the way you hold a phone, the way you swipe, the way you touch the device. So I hear that you want to do a little bit of a show and tell for us to talk us through how this tech works. Go for it. Sure. Uh, this is a regular iPad. One of the things that you'll notice as I hold it are these sort of lines. That's from the accelerometer of the iPad. And if I go like this, you'll see the wave in the green sort of line here. And if I go like this, you'll see the red one, it's very right? Sensitive, That's isn't the sort it? of uh, motion detection. And this is up and down. Actually, if I put it again on the table and I just tap it lightly, you'll see that it's very, very sensitive. This allows us to understand how you touch the device and what happens after and before you touch it. And also, uh, you know, swipe motions. How do you actually control the application? I'm going to show you how unique people are. I'm going to show uh, several uh, people. This is a QA manager. And the way she's actually moving, she has a lot of small corrections at the end of her motion. Let's actually compare her to another guy. You can see that these are very, very straight lines. There's a small correction at the end. It's almost like a very sharp correction. Mm -hmm. And then before he touches the device, the hand is more shaky than, than, than her. So all of that is, is uh, very unique to that individual. I can see how distinct those two are, even in the very, very small, minute details. I wonder what mine would look like. I type really, really fast. So, putting you on the spot now, Jose. Sure. Go for it. Oh, I have a little game for you. Oh. Uh, here you go. Try to impersonate the signature of any of those yeah. celebrities. Pick your favorite. All right. I'll go for Marilyn, just for fun. Okay. Right. So, what you're playing with now is the technology behind our seal sign product. And this signature is going to give legal validity to the documents you use it on. Uh, you might think that it's looking pretty similar, and I think I, I'm actually happy with that. The thing is, the, 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 the engine is not tracking only how similar it is, it's only in which order you do it, in, at which speed you do it, at which, uh, how much pressure you apply to it. So, uh, obviously you failed. <laughs> it is very, very hard to get it right, even if you train over and over and over, because the amount of parameters that are involved. Yeah, my fraud potential is low. That's quite yeah. good to know, very reassuring. Yeah. That's fascinating, thank you for that. No problem. A lot of recent studies have shown that it can be a little bit easy to actually spoof some of these biometric modalities, such as fingerprints, your voice, and your DNA, which is really scary. 
How much more secure is this type of technology over what's currently on offer? It's not that different to a password, a website asking for your password. It could be very properly implemented and secure. It could be completely full of vulnerabilities that cyber criminals could exploit. You have a cheap iris scanner, then with a high resolution picture of your eyes, you're gonna be able to bypass it. And people have been crafting fake fingertips and, and fingers with household items for like more than 10 years. And actually, I heard about someone doing that with gummy bears. Yeah, yes, okay, yes. which is amusing, but quite serious, actually. It is. Specifically for behavioral biometrics, there are two things in kind of favor for that. One is the fact that it's continuous. It's something that tracks the session end to end. It's not just a specific point, so it's much more difficult to spoof, you know, throughout the entire session. And the second thing is that there are many parameters. You know, in our technology, it's like 500 different parameters unknown to the attacker. So it's very difficult to actually try to spoof all of that and mimic a, a real person. Okay, so you're saying it's probably a little more foolproof than some of the other more casual methods out there. Guys, thank you for being in my hot seat today. That was a really snappy discussion, but we covered quite a lot. Right, yeah. thank you very much. So all the security tech we've just talked about is fascinating, but let me leave you with a little food for thought. These tools need to feel easy to access and use for the non-techies, like my mum, and more critically, to be designed to be accessible for the one billion disabled people worldwide. Thank you for watching.